Hey Measuring Hero, Jay here. Today we want to unpack the theory behind what's going on with the blue lights of an ATO scanner. So they shipped me all the way here to Braunschweig so we can talk to Norman and find out. So let's go chat with him. Okay, so that's an ATO scanner. These are the lines. There's a Norman. Norman. Hi, welcome Jay. Good to see you again, my friend. Uh, okay, thanks for your time. Mm -hmm because what I really want to understand today is what are these blue lines doing here? I can, I can give it a try. <laughs> All right, cool. So, we have an, a fringe projection scanner here. Okay, yeah. Uh, in Germany, we call it actually a stripe projection scanner. Okay, okay, yeah. So, you know, basically, it projects Project a stripes. fringe yeah, makes uh, sense. stripes uh, <laughs> on, on parts. So, I'm curious, what do you think uh, the stripes are for? What do I think? Okay, this is my... Uh, Yes, basically, right? So what I think is happening is the projector is projecting stripes onto the floor as a reference, right? And then these cameras are reading, okay, the floor is what it should be, it's at nominal. And then when a part gets in the way, the cameras are detecting that there's a, something in the way and there's a distance and the distance between what we're seeing and nominal is the scan. How am, I, how am I doing? It has been a nice guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's wrong? Is it, it really wrong it's, or it's, it's, wrong? it's quite wrong. <laughs> oh, jeez. Right. Um, it's wrong in a way that I want to, um, yeah, let me explain it to all you. All right, all right. Uh, Let's have a look. <laughs> <clears throat> so we're talking basically about uh, image processing. Right. Okay, we have right. two cameras okay. which are collecting images. Mm -hmm. So you have an image consisting of pixels. Yep. Yep. So if you're just viewing a, a tiny area, you have some contribution of black and white pixels or right. gray, gray pixels. Right, right. Um, and each of, that, of these pixels can have a, a number, a, let's say a number for its, uh, for its grade of, of yep. the lighting. Yep, a grayscale number, right? Yeah, could look like this, for instance. Now, in my world uh, of video CMMs, uh, what we're looking for is the highest contrast number between, and that's where we register a point, so to speak, where we look for the biggest deviation between black to light and light or light to black, and then wherever that point is, that's where we register a point. Is this a similar situation here? It's, it's quite similar, or the, the same mathematics behind. Okay, okay. So um, you can imagine if you make a, make a section through, the, uh, through the, the black and white pixels, mm -hmm. it could look like like this, for instance. You have yeah. some, some light uh, area and you have some, some dark area. Mm -hmm. And what you're searching for, as you say, that is the, the most contrast or the highest contrast. Yeah. And what we are doing, and you said like that, we are, um, we are doing such a graph and um, um, I pointed the grayscales mm -hmm. on this graph here. So we have white pixel, white pixel, white pixel, or mm -hmm. light pixel. Here are the dark pixels. And we are searching for the highest gradient here, In which between. actually is the point of highest contrast in between some pixels. So Somewhere we are we're calculating, we're measuring uh, with, uh, with sub-pixel uh, accuracy. So it's the same theory of sub-pixel interpolation that, 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 that is happening you know, behind the scenes. Yeah. Uh, okay. okay. Just, for, just for understanding. Yeah, understood, um, okay. You may know the typical laser scanner. You have yeah. a, normally a red line or blue line or whatever mm -hmm, of, mm -hmm. of laser light, which is basically the image here, uh -huh. you have your part over here where the, the line is. The contour, And, and yeah. you're, you're searching for this, for this laser point, right. like okay. pixel-wise okay. uh, uh, detecting these, the information that you want to have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What we are doing is, as we have a, a stripe projection unit, let's say, yeah. we're, we're doing the same thing, but multiple times at the same You're projecting a time. line. You're projecting a contrast line. Yeah, but not one line, but multiple lines. Whoa. So what we are searching with this gray mathematics are the contrast lines uh, for this for this so for the you're projected creating stripes. Creating a contrast point on the part, and then you're measuring that part at sub-pixel resolution. Yeah, that's that's correct. Okay. And what we are also doing is not just having one image with these these lines. Mm -hmm but moving the lines across the, uh, across the part. So you have several images at once for, for really uh, having the, the full surface of, uh, yeah, of your part. Okay, so... You can, you can imagine that, <laughs> that every, every pixel pair of camera and projector can make one 3D image point on, your, on, your, on the part surface. Yeah. And we have 
a couple of million of these pixels. And then you're doing, so you're finding that point across each line, across the entire camera chip, and it's moving. And it's moving. And we have two cameras, so oh. we're doing this two <laughs> times at a time. <laughs> um, all right, so let me wrap my head around this. You are doing pixel by pixel, sub, uh, uh, sub pixel interpolation of contrast points across multiple lines that are moving with multiple cameras. That's the idea, yes. Oh, Lordy. Uh, um, Norman, that sounds like an awful lot of math, and it sounds super hard to do. There's got to be a lot of clicks. Oh, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do this on a sheet of paper, but, <laughs> but let me show you uh, how it works with a computer. All right, OK, let's do it. <laughs> All right, Norman, so what I think I'm seeing here is that the lines are actually the system projecting contrast stripes on, I guess at this point, me, the workpiece, uh, and then us reading that. But uh, I guess my next question is, how does that translate to 3D? To 3D data. Data, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the answer is, we have a calibrated optical system here. Okay. We have two cameras, we have a, um, a projection unit, mm -hmm. um, and the system is calibrated so the angle between the cameras and the projection unit is known. So we know the, the exact angle. Okay. Um, so you can imagine when you have one camera pixel and mm -hmm. the corresponding um, um, projector pixel or yeah. the other camera, camera's pixels, you can build triangles. Like where, yeah. where are they, yeah. they, they meeting, the, the intersection point between the the, the lines. Point. Yeah, the, the XYZ yes. point. Yeah. Exactly. So with this triangulation, you can calculate one 3D image point on the surface, in this case, yep. from your legs. For me, yeah. And you can do this calculation for every pixel pair, which you can, can have here. <laughs> yeah. So like pixel pairs of both cameras, or of camera and the projector, and the other camera and the projector. Oh, OK, wow. All right. So not only are you doing the triangulation from camera to camera, you're actually corresponding pairs to do tandem pairs, and I, I mean, I guess that further resolves the image quality, but that's just more math. It's more math. Yeah, you can assume we have cameras here with 12 million pixels. <laughs> yeah. Two of them. <laughs> times one, times two, and the, wow, that's insane. So all of that math is happening, not only simultaneously pixel by pixel, but we're doing it across a contrast stripe, multiple contrast stripes that are moving, uh, that's, again, got to take a ton of time to do, right? It's got to be difficult to sit down and... Let me just show you. So, see it. stand still. Okay. And I will do all the mess. Just You'll do that. <laughs> just right. with a push of a button. So, there's the scan. Scan finished. Now data is being transferred to the computer. Scan's finished. Scan's finished. Wow. And here's, wow. here's your 3D data. Look at that. Just in those few seconds, we were able to gather all of that, all of that math. All of that just math. Just happened right there. And to give you one more clue, <laughs> look, look at your clothes. You have uh, a red jacket, you have a dark shirt, a light, light pants. Yeah. Um, normally you would, uh, you would have to set different exposure times for different levels of, of reflectiveness. Sure. So a dark one, a light one, a red one. But I did not set any. Software did, did all for me. It's it all automatic. It did all that. So not only did it do all of that triangulation math, it also set uh, the uh, uh, yeah, the, the exp exposure time, pixel by pixel. Uh, at least for, for certain areas, yes. Automatically in those few seconds, and then... And here's your data. Wow. That's insane how much <laughs> happens there. Um, all right, Norman, I really have to digest this. Thank you very much for taking the time to show us exactly what happens, more than just explaining what those lines are, but just kind of unpacking what is happening behind the scenes with those scans. Can we come back? Of course. You're invited to come back. We have plenty, to, plenty more to show. All right, all right. We're going to do it because I have plenty more questions and <laughs> things that I don't know about. <laughs> awesome. Okay. For you out there, 
Hope we enjoyed uh, our little look at uh, kind of what goes on behind the scenes of an ATO scanner. I know I learned a lot. Hope you continue to stay safe and stay healthy. We'll see you next time.